PDF3D.io toolkit can be used in .NET applications to directly call a DLL in addition to command line and RESTful API. In this session, we'll start Visual Studio and start a new project. I'll select a console app C Sharp type project, which will have the default name of console app 5, and we'll click OK. So once this starts up, it populates our project with some sample template code, which we can remove. And for the purposes of this session, I'll bring in a simple example that we can use and walk through. This has been simplified down where I've removed most of the typical error checking and I'm going to hard code file names and set it up to be a minimal example that we can walk through and get a quick overview of how the code is structured. First thing to do is to go to our type uh, configuration, select new, select 64 bit as a development type. Click OK, and then we have a debug x64 type of .NET application. The code that I've just brought in, we set up a namespace PDF3D.io example and have some types which are standard callback hooks that we can add to our running process for warnings, debugging, fatal errors, and various progress reporting as it's running. The first thing to do is to add our small wrapper class in here, which brings in PDF3D.io.core.dll, which provides all the services. And the primary use of this is to call a single method called pdf3dio convert.net, which has half a dozen arguments to pass in with that method. Okay, then our program itself, we can just populate some dummy callbacks for now. Don't worry about the implementation. The only implementation we'll add here is when it's doing some progress through the conversion, we can simply write out to the console uh, what it happens to be doing. Then let's get down to our main program. We start defining a simple console app main, and we'll, as I was mentioning earlier, we'll hard code both the input and output file names here for the purposes of this session. And then the next thing is we build up a simple string which has XML content in it. And the minimal content we're providing provides an output file name and an input file name within the XML string. And these take exactly the values that we've just hard-coded up here above. And then the second piece of XML we need is what kind of converter are we going to be using. In this case, I've specified an STL file up here, so I'll pick the single DLL supporting STL conversions down here in our interface configuration block. Okay, so we basically have two strings, and now we can actually call a method. So the method itself calls our wrapper that we defined above, and then we simply pass our XML string for telling the converter what to do, our interface selection string, and then our simple callbacks that we've added to simply report the progress as it's running or any status that it brings back. Okay, with that set up, then we can go to build, build solution, and we see that it succeeded in building a new executable for this small example. So there's many ways to configure this for running. It's going to pick up all the other DLLs it needs at runtime, so we either have to copy them all over to our local project, or I just copy our new executable over to the main pdf3d.io folder that has all the DLLs present anyway. So I'm going to do that for now in this session. Okay, I've just copied the executable over here, console app 5, as we can see in the file explorer. Then to run that, I can come over here to command prompt in the same folder, and I can type console app 5 and hit return. And we can see the progress that it's created, and then opening the output we have a fully built interactive 3D PDF. In this second session, we'll start Visual Studio from the command prompt and do a full build of the example as shipped. So first, cd into the example directory where we can see the source code program.cs is available plus a small project resource. We can go ms build c -sharp .proj to build it, and it creates a new executable. So we can go up to the top directory of pdf3d.io, and we can run this new example with command line arguments for both input and output file, and then open the output to see the result. To learn more about PDF3D.io, see PDF3D.com.